see if this is more interesting as a top-down shot. Like, like what? Like what could go wrong if you start streaming like this? Like what could possibly go wrong? Everybody likes this, right? Me upside down in the stream. Uh, yeah, let's just uh, let's all the things. Here we go. All right. Uh, let's see. The other stuff, yeah, I still love remixers. I'm going to keep on talking about remixers. I'm going to go back to talking about remixers. Because uh, this is just the remixers. I love these guys so much. And the fact that they made a million of them is not that surprising now. Uh, yeah, man, what a great thing. I'm going to... Here's the thing, guys. I'm just going to reach out to these guys. Uh, we're going to get these guys on the podcast. I don't even care. Like, we, we need them on the podcast. I want to talk to them so much because they're doing FDM printed parts and they've made a million of them and so daggum useful. Hoorah! Uh, about remixers. Let's see what's happening here. You know, we have stat by combining AI optimized with designs with advanced in house automation, we set a new benchmark for performance. Nice. We serve proven cost savings, sustainability is built in. Zmex technology, nice, just nice. Uh, yeah, cool. I love everything about that. Those guys are doing such a good job. The remixers are doing great stuff. Hey, what's up, Chuck Penderson, the City Studios, Kevin and Comb. Uh, how's it going, y'all? Good to see ya. Welcome to the show. Who up? Okay, uh, let's see here. What else we got? I am supposed to be over here. I've got way, way too many uh, things open. Okay, here we go. Uh, what else? You got? What do you guys want to go over? Thanks, Kevin. So, s running through the different 3D printing uh, methodologies and things that we've got here right now, we, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop up the stream. I'm going to watch it from here so that I can help out. I'm going to actually, this is actually a good one. I'm going to go to STL dash, and we're going to go ahead and just look at this for a moment. There were a couple bugs yesterday when I uh, threw it up there, so everybody was able to see it. We had a small delay. So STL bash is our little STL uh, moving tool and that kind of stuff. Uh, but we have a whole bunch of nifty little negatives in here. So like this one is a sprinkler. I'm going to go ahead and just make a sprinkler for y'all. I realize now that we should put basic primitives into this, uh, which we have not done, but we will get to that. But if you drop in a couple of these things, and then we scale this thing up, uh, if I do this like that, and I do something like that, something like this, and then move that over into the sprinkler, uh, Okay, whoop, whoop, that's it, there we go. Okay, and then move this down, just like this. Oh, uh, that's not quite the direction I was wanting to go, but let's do this anyhow. So now, I put that like that, and like that, and like this, and just like that, and then I go ahead and do a Boolean operation on this. Just like that, and then let's see how long it takes this Boolean to process. <laughs> Because it's a complicated boolean. Um, Sean Tech Lab, do you use Prusas? We don't really use Prusas. Prusas don't really work uh, well for the types of stuff that we do inside of the print farm. Oh, there you go. Now you got a sprinkler. And if I had actually shoved that in there a little bit further, you would have had the threads and everything on the sprinkler. But uh, there you go. That's, that's how you do that. So STL Bash is building out all kinds of these little things. And then you can download this SDL and print it yourself, and then you'll have also the option to buy stuff down there. Uh, what's the risk to a small printing hot, uh, license uh, print operation using licensed software with your pla uh, with their platforms? So, what is the risk to a small printing company using hobby licensed design software using your platforms? Oh, for our platforms, nothing. Uh, we don't mind. You can use whatever software you want to design your stuff. It has no effect to it. So when you're using Teleport, which is our, our print-on-demand service, uh, Teleport lets you upload a file connect and connect it into your Etsy store. So when you get an order, we will print it and ship it for you. Uh, 
how that STL got made doesn't matter. So long as you're not stealing someone else's design, uh, we don't mind and it doesn't have any effect to us. Um, and it's technically still a hobby. A side hustle is a hobby, so you're good. All right, uh, let's see here. I've seen you use brass inserts and magnets with prints. Have you ever tried clear acrylic or polycarbonate panels? Sure. Yeah, you can put that stuff in there. Um, yeah, all those things are fine. Uh, let's see here. Would you rather pet a big crow or a new crow? Uh, okay, moving on to the next thing. What do we got over here? Uh, Washington wants to pass a similar law. Everybody's thinking about it, guys, with the whole whatever ghost guns thing, but like it doesn't, it's not going to happen. Um, okay. Uh, by the way, if epoxy costs three dollars, four dollars a pound, that makes epoxy savings only a hundred million dollars to save per year. By the time saving and quality of mix is still the main, so the time saving and quality of mix is still the main driving force. For sure, yes, for sure. Uh, yeah, the the mainstream. Yeah. Let me get in here. Oh my gosh, why do I have to? I have the password protection. I have the fingerprint on my computer, but then it also requires I put in the password. And I want to remember my password. What's the biggest print that went through teleport? A brick that's eight inches across? Uh, let me answer that again. So what is the biggest print that's ever gone through teleport? It is a build volume brick. People are, have uploaded dragon heads and all kinds of other things to have printed through teleport to the connect up to their Etsy store. But the biggest parts that we've got is the maximum build volume that they have, which is a 220 by 220 by 220 brick. Multiple people, many people upload that. I don't know if it's an actual test or if they're just trying to mess with us, but a lot of people do just the great big old build volume brick. And we make it, we ship it, we slide it right into the box, and we send it to people, and that's the biggest part that we've made. All right, can you print an ABS through teleport? Uh, you can't print through ABS and teleport, but if you are fine using ASA, uh, we can get you helped out with that. Uh, ASA is not a default in teleport. We turn it on for particular users uh, once we verify that the part is good and that kind of thing. So uh, you can absolutely turn on ASA inside of your account if you need it. So just reach out to us, uh, support at slant3d.com or info at slant3d.com, and we'll turn on ASA for your account there. Uh, how's it going, T-Rex Off-Road? Hey, man. Uh, long time no talk. How's stuff going? Did you survive Christmas? Uh, Jimmy, looking like I can only watch the cell phone stream from my PC. The, here's the thing. I agree with you. I don't know what's up with the, the regular stream or whatever else it was. But, yeah, this is what we're doing. Um, this is a, a YouTube thing. So, we're... Oh, let me try this. Um, we'll throw some stuff up in other places. Um, let's see. Going beyond that. Uh, what about carbon fiber infused filament? So carbon fiber, show, show Sean Tech, uh, give more context about the parts you're making. Are you currently making a minimum of 100 parts per month or so? If you're doing that, we can basically turn on any material you want. Um, this is kind of a universal rule inside of Teleport. If someone is making a, a minimum of 100 parts or certainly 10 kilograms of material per month, we will pretty much turn on that material for your account. So you can basically get any material you want in Teleport so long as you meet those minimum quantity thresholds. And uh, once that is gets activated by somebody and just kind of breaks down the wall, then we will also start to make it available to other people as well. Um, okay, I love your content, appreciate the live stream. Thanks so much, Fishing, fishing the Mid-South. What a good name. Um, Abyssal Cactus, did you print any of my models? I haven't been able to run through and print any of your models, dude. Uh, you can get a print, you can upload it, and get a hold of one. Uh, I haven't had time to run through it. I, I work on the weekends, so I, I don't have time to run through one of those. And we only talked about it yesterday. Uh, don't you, are we allowed? Can I? I'll, I'll look it up. I may be able to get to some of them. Um... Opinion on the new New York governor 3D print, requiring 3D printing to so, software to block gun parts. Uh, 
it doesn't matter. They, she only mentioned it, or they only mentioned it, or he only. Me- I don't know who the governor is. Um, they, it was only mentioned in the context of um, a state of the union address, a state of the state address. So that doesn't mean it's going to become policy. It just means it's something that's forward in their mind as a thing to get people riled up. Uh, generally, the state of the state addresses are meant to kind of give a, a bead on policy, but there's no way to regulate it. The machines can be built themselves. They're made in China, which has no regulatory requirement on it all. So it just doesn't matter. So I, I don't know what's up with all of it. it. I wouldn't worry about it, and it doesn't matter. Uh, and ultimately, if they're trying to stop bad people from doing bad things, a bad person can get a hold of a 3D printer from like this year, that's been delivered already and print parts with it just fine. So the idea that the software is going to identify those parts is ridiculous. However, one company is capable of actually doing this, which is um, uh, FISNA. FISNA has the technology to identify this, but it can't exist locally on the printer because it's too complex. There's no way for a printer to identify a gun part short of reading the word gun, which means you can't make Nerf guns and you just remove like the word gun and then it's okay. Um, right, yeah, fishing the Mid-South. There's no way manufacturers could implement this. It's, it's, just, a, it's just a boondoggle. Uh, Devin, I have a part that is going to be exposed to the elements. So the main body is linked, the skew with PET-G and the smaller trim pieces of PLA. It's a speaker holder. Does your machines do multi-material? So if you've got one part that's PETG and another part that's PLA, that's totally fine. Inside of Teleport, well, let me say that. If you've got multiple parts with different materials, that's totally fine inside of Teleport. What you do is you just upload the files, all five files to your Teleport, and then you select on one file and you say, you want that one in PETG, and you select this one and you say, I want that one in PLA, and then you select that one and you say, I want that one in yellow. And that way you can get a part with a purple lid and a PETG black base and put them together and ultimately the order is good to go. Okay, so uh, what about slicers? Slicers could do it, but the slicers are open source projects. So how do you regulatorily require that that software do it? Am am I out of focus right there? Freaking, there we go. Got the autofocus back on. Wait, is the autofocus back on? Yeah, no, it fell out again. This is so, I am so over this. Um, Yeah, that gets really old right there. Okay. Um, What else we got? Did we, what about slicers? Okay, cool. Did my cut, uh. Someone keeps on saying Devin. My name is Gabe. Or is there someone in Devin in, named Devin in the chat that you're all talking to? Um, or is this a, a thing that I don't know about about myself that I am recognized as Devin? Uh, uh, looks like a video quality issue. It's not a video quality issue. Uh, it's a focus thing. Um, yeah, we'll get through there. Sweet. We got it all fixed. Ah, uh, okay. Let's see here. What else? How many hours did the Lego brick print? Have you had prints that took days? Uh, yeah. Some prints take days. We printed a pretty high resolution in our parts, and they're a high infill. So, like, so all of the, the parts inside of Teleport are printed with a 0.2 resolution and a 25% infill. So, it, depending on what the material is, parts can take days. And if somebody has uploaded a solid brick that takes up the full build volume of 220 by 220, it can take a minute to get the part out the door. But generally, it's not that big of a deal because there's just, I don't know, there's all the things that go wrong inside of it. Um, the, it we print it out, it takes two days to print it, and then it ships quickly, and it messes with our stats. But 99.5% of orders still go out in under two days. So... Um, you are displacing your computer on the other channel. Yeah, I know. I'm doing that on purpose. I don't. I don't care because the other one was just taking too long. So I'm gonna let this run. Uh, looks like there's two streams. Need to go log off and back on. The second stream was about a a minute behind. Yeah, yeah, guys, we got multiple streams going right now. There's one from the phone and one from the desktop. There. Go ahead and pick the one that you like. Um, 
we're doing that kind of on purpose. I would recommend the the original scheduled stream, um, but it was having technical problems. So it finally got rolling there, but we got it going. Um, I uploaded a test part to teleport. Does the price reflect printing, packaging, and shipping all in that price? Let me answer this. Uh, so does the cost for, uh, of teleport include printing, packing, and shipping in that price? So the price is for printing and packing. That gets it fully out the door. Shipping is a wholly separate cost because you never know what that is. Um, so whatever price shows up on your file inside of teleport or portals, that's how much it costs to make the part. Shipping is then billed separately when we know where to ship it. Because if we have to ship it internationally, that's a different cost than if we have to ship it down the street. Okay. Um, let's see here. I barely got into 3D printing last year. Have you seen it rise in popularity? Yes, Bamboo has been one of the ones to really uh, increase the overall reach of 3D printing because they talk to people that historically haven't been talked to. Hold on, let me put that over there. I see my stream is infinitely feeding on itself. Um, but the so much of what is going on with it is just a, uh, a matter of... That's so funny. Um... It's finally reaching other people and is being marketed towards other people who are not necessarily the traditional 3D printing nerds. So that's kind of how it goes. Um, okay, let's see here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go back over here for anybody on the other mainstream. We'll catch everybody all over the place, guys. I don't know what's going to happen here. Um... Yeah, overall, there's just like so. Everybody, pref the mobile stream is always better than the desktop stream. Always does better. Uh, okay. Actually, guys, everybody who's down here, who's looking right here right now, go back over to the channel, join the other stream, because I'm going to end this stream for a second, even though it's been running for a moment. Um, and we're just going to go to desktop, because I want to demo a bunch of software there. So, right here, I'm not going away. Just go to the channel and then go to the other stream. Uh, right here. Okay. 